Ipero excellence is a construct gaining ground day by day. It is the knowledge that Ipero's sons and daughters, home and abroad across different generations, will continue to remind the whole world of the greatness of the land of Akeson by shattering glass ceilings and pushing frontiers in every sphere of life. The beam of Iperu Excellence shines brightly today, this sunny afternoon, on an Iperu native who is unapologetic about his Iperu origin. He is a successful businessman and soon to be the Assured Juoba of Iperu at the forthcoming day two of the 20th coronation anniversary of the Alaperu of Iperu. His name is Chief Kole Olatunji. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good to be in your office. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Okay. Having the greater tomorrow. Having the greater tomorrow. Finding the time with me. <laughs> so real good. I'm happy to hear that, sir. So before we dive into your Iperu story, I know that you were a successful businessman for many years before you setting up, you know, other things that you do. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um. After my high school education in Mayflower School, Bikene. I was between 1969 to 74. A year later, 75, I had this ambition mm -hmm. to become a banker. And of course, before you could be a banker, you have to be a member of the Association of Institute of Bankers which is acknowledged as the only professional organization for bankers and their AIB qualifications, which holds international recognition. Mm -hmm. According to the entry requirements of that organization, then in the 70s, you have to be in the banking industry. So I had went into banking mm -hmm. and I joined, uh, I started with UBA. United Bank of Africa, that was in 1975. Mm -hmm. And that also gave me the opportunity to embark on my career as a banker. And of course, registered with the Association of Institute of Bankers, London, mm -hmm. that same year. Wow. And a year later, as part of my desire and willingness to explore other banking industries, I moved to Barclays Bank Brazil, mm -hmm. which is now Union Bank. <laughs> wow. And that's uh, so why I was with Barclays Bank CEO from 1976 to 79. And in the late 70s, during the emergence of the uh, national banking industries, mm -hmm. I had to move from my commercial banking to national banking, which is more resourceful, more challenging, and it also gave us the point to relate more with corporate organization foreign investors. Mm -hmm. So I was with International National Bank from 1979 to 1983, uh, 1985 rather. Mm -hmm. So but even before then, just before I started my career mm -hmm. at 20, I had already made up my mind that I was not going to spend more than 10 years in the industry because of my desire and belief in being self-reliant. I'm a very, very believer of education for self-reliance. That is the ability to use your brain and your wherewithal to make a lot of meaning for yourself. So I left the banking industry when I was 30 as a management wow. staff of International Master Bank. I then the head of admin in Canon Branch. I was I left the banking industry in 1985 to set up the company that is called Emac Limited mm -hmm. that same year. And of course, of my passion for real estate, I went into real estate business and also as a builder smashers. And of course, over the years, the company has grown in leaps and bounds. And so we have our branches spread across the nation. And we're also into trade finance, part of my banking on it, to assist traders to import finished goods and manufacturers to bring in their raw materials. So we are more or less providing secondary financial assistance to both traders and manufacturing industries. Wow. Okay, that is so impressive. It's safe to say 
it's, it's very obvious you have had a very successful run from 1985 to now today and, um, 30, 37 years 37 years yeah. <laughs> that is no small feat um I so. so i have seen that it's very obvious that you are a very driven man you're a very passionate man about what you do and you have also been doing this for many decades yeah and this is something that um even before the Alaferi of Peru was coronated, you have been involved in your community right. as an imperial man. Right. And then you even set up the Akeson Royal Executive. No, and yeah. you have been so involved in the growth of your community. And I'm just wondering what drives you? Yeah, you see, I want to believe there's no place like home. I was born in Iperu. And one interesting thing about Iperu is that it's strategically located yeah. its closeness to Lagos is an added advantage and I saw long before now that there will be a time when people like me will prefer to operate from my hometown mm. instead of just staying in Lagos so that's actually prompted my desire and willingness to see what I could do to contribute to the development of my community mm. and of course this opportunity came in 1991 31 years ago, when mm -hmm. the late, my late uncle and the oba of the town, Ogufora, was the Alaferro of Iberu. Mm. Uh, I was called to be the chairman of Akezon de Celebration, which was the annual celebration of the town. And I seized the opportunity to establish the club called Akezon Royal Executive today, mm -hmm. in anticipation that it would be wiser and better for me to bring people of like mind, age bracket, to drive that, you know, vehicle and seize the opportunity to contribute to the socio-economic political development of my town. And I think I was the chairman of the president of that club for well over 15 years. Okay. Yeah. So we did the street naming of the club and a whole lot of things were put in play. But today, I want to tell you that the club has really grown in leaps and bounds. I will be able to generate even funds from the presidency, you know, to create some kind of vocational institution and event centers, which I consider to be well over 500 million wow. recently. That should be commissioned mm -hmm. very, very soon under the leadership of our current president, uh, the Reverend Paul Laoyebe. That is very fantastic. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting to see how passionate you are about the community. And as you said, there is no place like home. Definitely. And um, uh, in, an, in a recent interview with KBC, he mentioned that when he got his letter of appointment right. back in February 2002, that your office was the very first place yes. he came to. Yes. Uh, I wonder how you must have felt at that moment. Yes, you see. Incidentally, Alakwero, where we could say we are contemporaries, age group. Mm. But when we were growing, he was not really part of the system in the But it has pleased God to make him the Alakwero of the And part of the conditions precedent to his installation as the Alakwero was for him to belong to a club. So our late uncle, a former minister in the Second Republic, Chivola Wotesu, was my very great uncle and one of my encouragers and my mentor, mm -hmm. actually told Alakwa to get in touch with me and the moment he sees me, I will formalize his membership of our club and that was just okay. it. So, so immediately he got here, yeah, he was sitting right there. <laughs> Uh, what are we waiting for? Thank God where it grows and that's the purpose of this union. The purpose of actually establishing this was for people of like mind mm -hmm. with age in the age brackets to come together and contribute to the development. So now that we even have a royal blood, mm -hmm. it adds value mm -hmm. to you know to the formation of the club, even mm -hmm. from the inception, and that's why it is called Akeson Royal. So when a <laughs> KBC, a royal, now a royal, royal blood, blood uh, I'm from the royal family, so I'm okay. from the Amoro, mm. Amoro uh, family, royal family in the world. Mm. 
Okay. That's, uh, you know. So for him, I he's from Maduro, so we're just one big royal family. Royal happy family. Oh, definitely <laughs> happier than ever before. Wow. And I want to thank God for and that. And that has been it's in the forthcoming 20 years, very soon. Right. Which is right. why we're celebrating right. and looking right. at what Ipero has been able to achieve in the past two decades. Right. The amount of growth, the amount of successes. You know, how do you feel personally being seriously, a founding member of part of this journey? Yeah, seriously, I want to thank God for his steadfast love. Because the word of God says his steadfast love never ceases and his mercy never comes to an end. He does the renewal on the basis, And that's exactly what we're expressing in the query amount. So I want to thank God for our royal father, a brother and a friend, for what he has done and what God has made him to do in the last two decades in the Raymond. And I'm personally extremely very happy and proud to be associated with this success stories. Mm -hmm. And that's why when he called to make me one of his chiefs. Mm -hmm. Over 10 years ago, we ruminated over it, and I said, okay, I like, well, yes, I'll be, I want to be the actual job, but mm -hmm. I said, consider it done. Mm -hmm. I got my letter about 10 years ago, and I've been that, I've been quite busy with all the activities, as a Christian, mm -hmm. a head of a society, I've uh, been part of Fountain of Hope Ipan. International. <laughs> you know, I was trying to serve until I get to the pinnacle of our society. And I just finished the service. Okay. But after my uh, involvement in that society last year, mm. I was exactly 28 years that I converted. And at 28, by the special grace of God, I had the opportunity of serving that society. Fountain of Hope International is an interdenominational Christian organization. Okay with chapters within and outside the country, including the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity of serving to the Pinnacle as the chairman, the number one. And now that I could serve that far, I just thought at my age, this is time to move closer to my people, considering the situation in the country, and the need to identify with the needs of without children, the indigent people, because God loves a shall forgive her. Mm -hmm. And we are all going to pass through this world just once. That's true. And there's a belief that anything one can do, any kindness you can show, mm -hmm. you could only show it when you're alive and when you have the capacity to do it. So at my age, going to 67, if I have four with 10 grandchildren, I think this is the time to have more children and possibly make myself the Abraham of our time. Wow. Yes, <laughs> because I you feel, you see, when you look at the situation of things in the country, I'm, I detest people coming to me to beg for money. And I believe very strongly that it is better to teach people how, how to, to fish, fish than to give them fish. Absolutely. So, it's, so for me, whatever it will take me to add value to humanity, I'm ready to do it now. And that's why I'm moving clear, near our home identify more with the day-to-day -day activities of the palace and ensure that the community is relatively safe. Absolutely. Because the only thing that can guarantee safety is when the people around you are comfortable. Absolutely. I think that was very well said. <laughs> and I'm sure that when you say having many more children, you mean yeah. by a form of help, a form of mentorship? Yeah, mentorship. Yes, a yes. form of, as you said, teaching how to fish. This is me and you, we are children of Abraham, according yes. to the word of yes. God. And you see, the more people you help, the better for you. They ultimately, when you are helping the younger ones, they are more or less your children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, maybe agree. by adoption, by support, or just to make them benefit from the development that is ongoing. Okay, so this leads me to my next question. You mm -hmm. said it's better to teach a person how to fish. And yeah. you talked about how you plan to impact the lives of so many people, uh, both closer to your hometown and right. around you. So when you think about the Peru community, how do you think uh, some of the ways we're going to teach them how to fish? Like I mentioned, part of the vision mm -hmm. 
Our mission statement of my club was to assist in the development of the youth. And that's why we've been able to use our corporate relationship with the government to ensure that a vocational center is established. At that vocational center today, we have well over 50 computers, well over 50 toy machines, and other material that could use, we could use to develop our youth so that they could be self reliant. Mm -hmm. I haven't acquired your, you know, you know, certificates as you know a graduate. The days of white collar job is gone, and it is gone for good. And that's the truth. That's true. But I identified this for a very long time ago, mm -hmm. and that's why I decided not to spend more than ten years in the banking industry. At twenty, I started. Thirty, I was out. So I've been on my own for thirty-seven years now. And to a very great extent, I can tell you without missing what, that I've acquired the much needed experience that I need to keep me going. And right now, I want to thank God for my life. And I want to believe God has been extremely very faithful to me and my family. And this is the time to pay back yeah. to other people so that we can add value to human beings. Adding value to your lives. Right. Very, very good. Okay, um, on the 25th of March, uh, we're going to confer the title, as you said, right. should you about the room. Right. And that is such a prestigious honor. It How is. does that make you feel, sir? Yeah, you see, mm -hmm. if you want to describe this as your job of a bureau, it's more like the prime minister to <laughs> the king or the royal ambassador and part of what i really intend to do is to ensure that i'm not just going to be i should just but i will be limited to equal i want to ensure that we explore all our global contacts reaching out because that's just what we have mm -hmm. to do now i'm not doing school runs mm -hmm. i get my point like i said i'm a father of children and grandchildren so my time now is dedicated towards using my office as I should job to contribute generously, meaningfully, corporately, and otherwise, the development of the town and our youth, including the indigenous, indigenous family. We just have to, need to add value yeah. to the well-being of yes, people. Yes, the community. The community. Okay, talking about adding value and building self-reliance right. in the youth. Um, coming from the perspective of a young person right. that is living in the Nigeria of today, that understands how tough it is, the economy is, and how tough it can be to be self-reliant um, in terms of looking for support, um, let's say capital, or even uh, knowledge of you know, skills, trade, like what you're saying you're providing, sometimes it can be discouraging. Um, thinking of setting up or being self-reliant as opposed to having a job. So with your wealth of experience, with your years of doing this, because you said you stopped at 30, working in the bank, and then you've been running your own thing successfully. That's the key word. So what advice, what encouragement will you give to the younger people out there that seem to be very tired was very exhausted by the crippling economy of Nigeria. You see, the most interesting thing about this country, Nigeria, that Nigeria is very, very resourceful in both human and Nigeria resources. And the population is there to really catch on. A population of 200 million people means a lot. And for whatever business you decide to do today, you really don't need to be too ambitious. Just go for 1% of this population. Just 1% will make a lot of difference in your life. For example, the very few people I did it, as a builder, merchant, as a realtor, and those that are in the banking industry, I assist the banks for the expansion program. Those that are in the food industry, like Chicken Republic, I'm into partnership with them. That's food concept. And those that are into oil and gas, yes, they need choice locations. 
for the expansion food. These are my areas, and I don't want to go beyond that. If I can have a bank, banking industry to be my client, those in the food industry to be my client, you know, you can't keep your money in your heart. You must take it to the bank. So banking industry wants to expand. And as long as they expand that new business, food industries like Chicken Republic, they are the biggest in Nigeria today. And I'm so proud to be part of them. As long as they are expanding, I'm expanding. Mm -hmm. Those that are into oil and gas sell the same thing. They need land. I'm bad to say, oh man, let me go for it. I'll get it for you. I'll make sure I give you the required comfort to do your business. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm doing that, then I'm spelling to my bank. Mm -hmm. What else do you want me to do that would be better than that? Not you, the youth. Young people. Oh, the youth. Yes. You see, that is what I'm saying. As I'm telling you how I started. Okay. And I expect the youth to tap into my ideas, mm -hmm. to begin to think of what you see for a youth, you need to identify what you really intend to do. Mm -hmm. Once you identify what you intend to do, because you just need to think of the right what you're doing, the right thing you feel you should be doing. And I believe you're enjoying every bit of it. Yes. But beyond that, it could still grow beyond what you're doing now. The moment you meet someone who could be considered as a credit analyst or business development consultant, I will now tell you, oh, um, Amanda, this thing you're doing, it could go this way, it could go this way. And before you know it, you're there. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we're talking about. Okay. For me, I'm ready to consult for the youth okay. and let them know how to develop their talents. Their talents. What you do, like I said, as a young man, I started as a high school student. I love mathematics. And when I decided to go into banking, I gave, I gave, me, gave me a check. I never thought of working. But I went to check. I saw the environment. I haven't left the high school in a very rickety, terrible area. I entered the bank for the first time, seeing people in tight, looking corporate dress, <laughs> and attending to taking a sheet of paper from me and giving me cash. And thought, oh, this is good business. I was to do it as I'm a gay woman. And I now thought of going yeah. to banking. And I studied and I realized that banking is a profession on its own. Before you could be part of it, you just have to go. And mathematics is my best subject. And mathematics, which is the main subject relating to banking. So I, because I became ambitious to a, a banker. Okay. Okay. And part of what I need to do to go into the course is to be in the banking industry. And that's exactly what I did. So the ability of a youth to identify what you actually want to do will become whatever you choose to be. That is very key. Don't walk on a beaten path. Don't walk on a wide path. Think of a path you should be created. Walk on your own path. On your own path. Hmm. The if we walk on other people's path, you will miss your way. But if you you must be a path finder, you must create your path. Make it very interesting that other people can follow. And that's the only encouragement I can give the younger people that look, think of what you really want to do within your community, think of what is lacking in your community, how you can introduce it, see how you could convince those that can assist in providing mm -hmm. funds. And before you okay. know it, Absolutely. you are there. That's that's very good advice. So yeah. from what I'm gleaning, you're saying it's about self-identity, identifying what you like, right. what drives you, mm -hmm. and how you can impact your generation with right. that. So right. how to add value. Oh, so it's not just about chasing money first. Nah, but first of all, chase money. you need to identify what you want to do before you can. You can't chase money without identifying mm -hmm. the purpose for which the money will come. <laughs> Absolutely, That's I agree. Definitely the okay, thank you so much for that advice, sir. So, um, the other elect that came to your office in 2019, who is currently the Alaka Road yes. has been on the field for the past 20 years. 20 solid consecutive years. That is no small. So, God alone, the victory. So, God alone, the victory. That was my question. What do you think has made it work for him? Kabi, you see, Oba Adeleke, 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 who I always refer to as the Akwepi Jolie. He's a very humble, humble man. Very humble. Very godly. So when you are godly, it shows that you love people. And God is love. 
the ability to express love gives you the opportunity to derive enormous blessing from God's blessing. Mm. And that is what I have said in him. Mm. If you are humble and you are godly, you see, that is just godliness with contentment. It's great gain. And that's why the word of God, even in Psalm 633 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of that is shall be added. So that's why you see people from nooks and crannies come into town, expansion of road, cargo, all the major mm-hmm. industries moving towards the equivalent mm-hmm. because we have a head mm-hmm. who is godly, who is prayerful, mm-hmm. and who is humble. He is humble. That's so that's what has Very kept good. us going. I want to thank God for his life. And I want to thank God for the way a man he has led in Peru in the last two decades. And my prayer is that because the Lord lives, he will continue to face tomorrow. Amen. And his last heart is there or not, even from this ninth day in the third month of this year 2022, mm-hmm. that will be greater than the former. Mm-hmm. In Morally, physically, and spiritually, mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, sir, where do you see Iperu in the next ten years? Ah, Iperu in the next ten years is going to be like Atlantic City of the United States of America. I love that. Where <laughs> we be coming from? Faraday, <laughs> hang on for mm. what the Lord has done. Mm. Iperu is the heart of the state. Mm-hmm. You can head to Abekuta from Iperu, head to Jebude, mm-hmm. Benin from Iperu. Head to Ibadan and all the way down to Ife from Ikberu and of course to the center of excellence, Chagam on Lagos. Mm-hmm. That's the heart. The heart keeps the life going. Ikberu is the heart and the topography of that town is super. Mm. It's flat all the way. Mm. I'm so, so proud to be a son of Ikberu. <laughs> I also want to thank God that I was born there, not outside Ikberu. Interesting. Uh, so I, I like to hear that. I started my education there. Mm-hmm. I, I'm so, so proud of it. I went to Wesley School. They don't need that as a missionary mm-hmm. school. They don't need to be met or this. After my primary school, I was in Lagos for my high school. And that has been it from there. Uh, I went to Mesla before mm-hmm. I took to banking and uh, started my banking career. Yeah. So it's been, it's been very good. So I hope it is safe to say that your favorite food is a father rice. Right? Ah, every pony. Ah. <laughs> every pony. Every pony comes for the father for the because a break will give you strength. The energy you need to weather the storm of life. Every time I eat a big I feel like boxing. <laughs> and that's the truth. Sentence <laughs> me. Oh wow. Yeah, that's they call it in, in other parts mm. of Nigeria, like mm. in Edo, they call mm. it Santana, six to six. Once <laughs> I eat it before six AM in the morning, kills me going to six PM. Then I will have my dinner. <laughs> then okay. I can eat too far at that time because that's lighter. <laughs> and of course there's no time I go to the point I don't buy. It. There's a guy called Sunday. Uh-huh. At times I call him for the person to come and serve us in our session of friends. Mm-hmm. The member of our session of friends and the media past vice president of the club. Okay. At times I tell him, bring our stuff. We call me with servants. <laughs> Yeah, all that, all that's that's good time. to know. Good yeah. to know. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank, uh, thank you so much for your nuggets of wisdom. So it's nice to know that yes. you are such an unapologetic Iperu native. Oh, we'll call that. You are very proud. Of very, extremely very proud. I'm even ready to work for me to Iperu. <laughs> if that is the part I'll <laughs> be to time. identify with my people. Thank I don't. I love my town. Look at this. <laughs> Just the walking distance. Let me put it that way. Yes. I walk out every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I've been doing it for about 21 years. So if there's need for me to walk from here now, it's better. Wow. There'll Hopefully, be no but there'll be no need. I will see you. No, there will be March no need. March 20th. It's, 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 it's a society. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on, guys. From here to there. Yeah, the bike. I'm ready to walk. I drive pleasure in walking out. Wow. Yes. That is very awesome. Thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have a happy, cheap, holy Olatunji who is soon to be the actual killer of Iperu. If you're not, this is still Iperu Tourism.